Hello, my name is Thain and I like to experiment with AI art. In a recent video of mine, we looked at some basic colors and their combinations. But this time I wanted to show you some more colors in a totally random order. The basis of selecting these colors was that they looked like they would change the images significantly. Or I just thought they looked so cool I just had to show them to you. So here are 25 more color words or phrases that definitely change your prompt. As usual, I have prompted the words and phrases by themselves in three different aspect ratios. 1 to 1 for square aspect ratio, which is the default if you don't specify anything. 916 for portrait aspect ratio. And 16 to 9 for landscape aspect ratio. Keep in mind they are just the ones I have selected, and I do urge you to try out whatever ratios you prefer. There is no limit in version 5 so you can basically do anything ratio-wise. And also to give you a better idea how each color word affects your prompt, I have also prompted the color word or phrase along with various other words. I like short prompts, so I have done just one other word at a time. The selection is landscape, wildlife, macro, architecture, interior, city, portrait, fantasy and sci-fi. Obviously there is an endless amount of things to prompt, but I think these nine give a wide selection of different subjects. But let's get started. First let's explore the soft and warm shade of wheat, which can remind us of golden fields and fresh bread. So this right away brings in the curse of words that have several meanings. We get the wheat color, but we also get images of wheat fields. It definitely changes your prompt. So obviously for landscapes we have wheat fields. The wildlife is peeking out from the wheat. And macro is a close-up of wheat. I do like the macro though. I may be regretting choosing this color for this video already. But for city you get views of a city from a wheat field. Interior has wheat growing inside buildings or in a vase. And architecture is finally starting to get the color, but there's wheat growing around the houses. I might have chosen this word, because I like the last set of images. Portraits definitely look different. Fantasy has some apocalyptic wheat fields with dramatic colors. And sci-fi brings in robot aliens that have landed in a wheat field. A possible depiction of how crop circles are made, perhaps. Let's now step into the lush world of verdant green, where nature's beauty comes alive with each vibrant leaf. And with just verdant green phrase we get really vivid green images. I like the tapestry and the garden images. Not sure why you would want images of yarn or scarves, but okay. Nature images are obviously so very green and luscious. I get the feeling of a summer day after rain. Architecture images are also very green obviously. City images are kind of odd and a bit overgrown. Interior images are possibly too green for my taste. But I really like the plant-covered architecture images. Portraits are all not in photographic style like most of the images have been so far. Fantasy finally depicts some nice green forests instead of pretty ladies in dresses like all the primary colors tended to mostly do. And sci-fi is also some nice green worlds of a futuristic alien jungle planet. No people in spacesuits. Now, we take a turn into the world of Ashen, where the absence of color creates a haunting yet captivating ambience. And right away this is another word that has some kind of a double meaning for mid-journey. Obviously we get the color of ash, but there also seems to be a video game with the same name, or at least similarly sounding name. Nature images are looking so cool. Landscapes could possibly be out of a video game. Wildlife gets a really nice look. Just ignore the lower right image, one of the deer has weird legs and another has something wrong with the horns. And macro seems to be very microscopic, 
definitely a change from the usual. Architecture-related images again get the look and feel of a video game. And there seems to be a lot of black borders in there too. I did prompt these images some time ago, so these are from the previous version of the V5 model, so it might already be fixed. Portraits also seem to be of video game characters. I do think that the game Midjourney is kind of referencing here is a fantasy game, because it does the fantasy well, but kind of struggles with the sci-fi imagery. Our next stop brings us to the earthy and grounded hue of brick, which adds a touch of warmth to any space. And as a double meaning word, we also get images of actual bricks, mostly in brick color. I think I chose this because it just looks so wacky and the brick just overpowers everything. Landscape is not really a landscape, but a paved walkway next to a house made of bricks. Wildlife is mostly cats on a brick wall. And some kind of a rodent that has found a nice ledge to hang out on. And Macro does some extreme close-ups of well, bricks. Obviously more bricks in the architecture-related images. City gets brick houses on the other side of the paved walkway as well compared to landscape. I think I like these the most again. Portraits are mostly faces coming out of a brick wall, very creepy. The fantasy images look really awesome. And the robots in sci-fi images are made out of some kind of bricks or blocks. As we journey forward, we immerse ourselves in the delicate and romantic shade of antique rose, evoking nostalgia and sophistication. The rose seems to be a really strong word here, we get so many of them with a worn look on the images. Although the images look nice, the rose really drown out landscape and most of the wildlife too. We do get a tiny bird in couple of the images, but not all. Macro seems to be even stronger as it does close-ups of roses, but they're not necessarily antique. Surprisingly city does show up, as does architecture. Interiors seem to be more antique and roses rather than antique rose. Even portraits and fantasy get drowned out by the roses. The lower left portrait goes especially weird, there is a face appearing from inside the rose. I absolutely love the tech roses of sci-fi. They have such an old yet futuristic and natural yet unnatural look to them. Nice contrast. Our next destination takes us to the cool and calming world of Jade, where the essence of serenity is captured in this stunning green hue. But Midjourney does seem to recognize the gemstone more than the actual color. I guess it is harder to depict just a color than an actual material. But luckily they are the same color. The gemstone is really an overpowering word, it totally takes over the landscape and transforms it to a jade statue of landscape. Wildlife fares better, for some reason Midjourney connects jade to some kind of wild cats. I guess jade is more prevalent material in Asia, because I get an Asian feel from these cities, interiors and definitely architecture. And portraits, fantasy and sci-fi give us ladies in jade-colored clothing. I like the fantasy ones of the mages and sorceresses. Sci-fi reminds me too much of spacesuits again as I've seen so many of them with this word, but these are quite nice too. Our adventure now leads us to the striking and mysterious world of Zephyr where deep blues and blacks converge to create a mesmerizing shade. But Midjourney has no idea what this word means. It does do something different for nature images though. In landscape, we get nice watercolor landscapes. Wildlife has some gorgeous animals. And I don't think I've seen Macro do so many eyes before. City for some reason shows up on wine bottles. Interiors do have some blue color in the churches. But I really like the look of these architecture images. Such great looking designs. Portraits are a mixture of photographic and photorealism. And a horse. The horse theme continues to fantasy too, where we do get a hint of the color this was supposed to be. 
The fantasy images look so awesome even though Midjourney doesn't really recognize this word. And sci-fi images are very awesome too. Yes there's some spacesuits, but I like the gadgets and goggles and things that add some more details to just a spacesuit. Let's now explore the world of chromatic, where vivid and saturated colors merge to create a feast for the eyes. As the word would suggest, there is an explosion of different colors. I love the landscape images, so pretty colors and different looking style. The animals look kind of weird with these colors. But macro images are looking nice, lots of water droplets again. City also has a cool painted look for most of the images. Very colorful interiors and exteriors. A lot of face paint on the portraits. Fantasy images are looking fantastic, there's even kind of an abstract image there too, very colorful and flowy. And very colorful spacesuits and robots. I'll forgive the spacesuits, they do go with the sci-fi territory. These look cool though. Our next stop brings us to the world of Flaxen, where the soft and delicate tones of this straw-colored hue bring warmth to any space. And this word brings in some figurines and some hair. I guess the expression Flaxen hair goes together quite often. The landscapes get a different look based on this, looks painted, but unfortunately I am not an art expert to tell what kind of ism this is. Animals are cute birds, love the duck. City images also get a really nice whimsical look to them, all are in different styles again. Interiors get the color right, but look kind of weird, I have no idea what they are the interiors of. Boats perhaps? The architecture also gets a little bit different look than usually. More Art Nouveau I guess. Portraits really do something different, instead of people we have dogs and horses. They look beautiful. Fantasy looks a little bit different, as does sci-fi. The flaxen hair really is featured for these images. Except the bald androids of course. Now, we delve into the world of monochromatic, where variations of a single hue are used to create depth and interest in a space. And the word itself tends to gravitate towards paparazzi photos of women in black, white or grey clothes, walking on the street. Nature images continue the photographic theme, we get black and white images. The landscapes have kind of a muddy feel to them. The zebras look nice. The black and white photography seems to continue in architecture-related images as well. Although there is a hint of color in the interior images, the colors are just so toned down, you can barely notice that there is a lamp with some color and dark brown vase. And on another image the plant actually is green. The portraits actually look really good. I like them so much, I used them in my previous video too but I did originally prompt the monochromatic portrait for this video. Fantasy has some wintry images. Not sure what has caused there to be several pictures in one this time. Sci-fi looks like it really likes spacesuits. And we will also look at the striking and fresh world of Viridian, where the cool and calming qualities of blue and green come together to create a mesmerizing hue. And we get another example of a word that seems to have an additional reference to something else for mid-journey. It feels again, like a video game or a fantasy comic book or possibly even anime that has this name. I couldn't find any references that would make sense. Write me in the comments below if you recognize what mid-journey is referencing to. The nature images look nice. Landscape is not at all in photographic style, it's kind of looking like concept art or a cartoon possibly, or anime. And the deer also get a different look. I don't know what the style is called. I really love the city images. It must be a video game theme I think, just a little bit modified. The architecture looks great too, kind of chaotic, but very nice towers. 
I'm not that impressed by the interior images though. The portrait images look very cute. Obviously a strong fantasy theme. It's funny how the noses seem to be pointed a bit upwards for all of the depicted women. Fantasy images look great too, the lower left one looks kind of strange if you zoom in on the eyes. Yes, spacesuits again for sci-fi, but slightly different. Now, let's move on to the most mysterious and enigmatic of all colors, the one that absorbs all light and reflects none, the color of the night sky and the unknown. Black. Well this is more of a traditional color, but I thought it looked cool. The landscapes look really dramatic with the blackened sky. Wildlife now gives us panthers lurking in the grass. And macro has really black bugs. The city and architecture images look very similar to what we've already seen, just different color. The interior images look really stylish to me. I guess I just really like this color. The last three themes look like they are heavily influenced by this color word also having a double meaning. The pictures do look fantastic. As we transition from the dark and brooding black to its opposite, we arrive at the pure and pristine color that encompasses all wavelengths of visible light and is often associated with cleanliness, simplicity, and clarity. White. And yet another traditional color, evidenced by the amount of household objects. Winter looks like it is a strong theme, as snow is typically white. So we get white snowy and icy landscapes. The animals look kind of weird. Macro images are okay. City images are of course covered in snow. The interior images feel Scandinavian to me for some reason and architecture feels like Santorini. It is kind of the symbol of white houses. And for portraits we have people in white clothing. Fantasy looks nice with the white animals too. Kind of a princess bride or warrior theme. And spacesuits look just like normal spacesuits. Next up, we have the vibrant and lively color that falls between blue and green often found in nature and evokes a sense of serenity and tranquility. Cyan. There's a lot of glass and many turtle figurines. I like the macro images the most, the shiny bugs look pretty. Even though bugs are not supposed to look pretty. The landscape has kind of weird coloring. Wildlife is not flattered by this color either. I am starting to doubt selecting this color for this video based on the pretty bugs. Nothing special in city, interior or architecture images. I guess I like the fantasy images, there's more fantasy worlds here instead of all images being just pretty princesses in flowy dresses. Let's now turn to the warm and earthy color that comes from a mixture of red, yellow, and black, representing stability, reliability, and wholesomeness brown. And we get a wide variety of objects. Also chocolates. Landscapes have a different look and feel to them, more painted again. Wildlife is actually looking more natural, as do the macro images. Okay, macro images are maybe not that natural. I haven't looked at bugs so much up close before. City images have that fun and whimsical theme again. Architecture has a different look for a traditional color. And interiors look different than normal too, more lived in with lots of clutter. And apparently a lot of lamps. Maybe they are furniture stores. Portraits seem to be in photorealism style. I really like the fantasy images, possibly my favorite images again with this color. But don't look too closely, the ladies seem to have three legs or just very weird poses. And brown spacesuits. Another warm and cozy color, beige is a light brown hue that exudes a sense of calmness, simplicity, and neutrality. And beige gives us handbags and belts. 
but the nature images are distinctly different. Especially the wildlife. Kind of looks like a tapestry or something like that. And macro is a close-up of some rope I think, and no water droplets at all. Really whimsical cities again, almost like a pattern. Very stylish interiors, rich people must live in places like that. And architecture images are kind of very normal and stuff that you probably see every day if you are living in an European city. I don't know if there is an artist or person with a name sounding like the color beige. The portraits look so similar as if they are of the same person. Fantasy has actually gone really abstract this time, they look more like curtain patterns to me. And I love the style of sci-fi in these images. Very different style from everything else. As we delve into the deeper and more complex hues, we encounter the rich and luxurious color that symbolizes power, nobility, and creativity. Dark purple. And we have yarn and a couple of hats. A strong note to the wildlife. I would never want to see animals that look like that. The landscape images are better, I really like the top left one. Macro images are looking good, we're back to flowers with water droplets on them. Half of the cities look whimsical. I also like the purple interior design. But I might be biased, because I really like purple. Fantasy and sci-fi look more like photo shoots with models. Heavily photoshopped feel to them. Often associated with sophistication, formality, and practicality, the cool and composed shade of grey can convey a sense of stability and timelessness. Dark grey. And we have more random bags and other objects I don't even know what they are called. Very sinister looking landscapes. Some alert wildlife in their natural habitat. Not so pretty looking bugs. I like the drawn cities again. The interiors are very sophisticated too. And normal looking architecture. I am again second guessing myself on why I chose this color for this video. I guess the fantasy images are looking a little bit different this time, there is no background on them. Kind of like dress designs. And a portrait of a dog. And some very dark grey spacesuits. Moving towards the softer and more delicate tones, we come across the muted and subtle shade of purple that emanates a sense of elegance, grace, and femininity. Mauve. Some yarn, cloth and makeup it looks like. I like the landscapes again, the grey is a good fit for the images too. Macro has some nice flowers. But the mauve frogs, I could skip. Kind of creepy and weird. Some more tapestry look for the cities along with one whimsical one too. Pretty antique chairs in the interior images. And the architecture is looking nice and old with flower bushes growing over the balconies. Portraits are painted and look really different. Sci-fi is looking good too, although enough with the spacesuits already. Fantasy has some oddities with the hands. There is a hand holding onto a tree and then the same hand is also holding onto a hip of the girl or the upper arm is a tree branch. There definitely is room to improve for the future mid-journey models. As we move to the greens, we find the lush and ever-present color of nature that represents renewal, harmony, and balance. Evergreen. Obviously this word is most related to trees that don't shed leaves in addition to the color with the same name. Nature images obviously run with the theme. There's some foresty views with some spruces. The squirrels and deer are peeking from next to pine trees. And very thorny macro images along with water droplets of course. Some of the trees in the city images are kind of unrealistically tall. There is also trees growing inside the interiors. I really like the architecture images with the greenery. All the portraits have evergreen branches on them as well. 
but the fantasy and sci-fi images are really beautiful to me. Still continuing with the evergreen theme, but incorporating fantasy and sci-fi elements there too. Stepping into the brighter and bolder shades, we encounter the vivid and intense blue that symbolizes freedom, energy, and innovation. Electric blue. And we start off with some makeup and lots of electric guitars. The birds are kind of unrealistically blue. But it's a fun touch that they're all sitting on electrical wires. Mid-journey is just so literal sometimes. Even landscape images have some electrical wires and poles in addition to the images being blue. Architecture images tend to have some HDR effect on them again. I think I established in a previous color video that the word blue seems to be causing this for these subjects. The color is very pretty in my opinion. Although now that I look at the images, the fantasy images look kind of weird and blue spacesuits again. A deep and vibrant shade of blue that brings to mind the vastness of the ocean and the power of the universe, ultramarine conveys a sense of depth, wisdom, and spirituality. Yet another blue without the word blue in it. But due to marine we also see some marine animals. Although the theme does not continue onto wildlife. Landscapes have nice watercolor paintings and macro looks like some kind of gemstones. We finally get rid of the photographic style mostly for these images. Nice whimsical city images. Even the interiors are drawn. And hey, finally some blue images of architecture and cities without the HDR effect. Portraits look more painted as well. Fantasy has some nice character images. More video game than fairy tale I guess. I mean there's even some proper armor on some of the women. And sci-fi does some figurines of possibly futuristic marine characters. In blue mecha suits obviously. As we explore the world of colors, we encounter the very essence of color itself, represented by the term hue, which refers to the purest form of any given color and it generates some lovely photographs for the landscape aspect ratio. From the landscape and wildlife images I am starting to get the feeling that this has some kind of a double meaning of a place somewhere in Asia. And a quick Google search tells me that Hue is a city in Vietnam and it has similar looking buildings. So the city, architecture and interior images seem to be referencing the city of Hue as well. Possibly there's a little more color than the actual city has, but I have never been there so I don't know what it's supposed to look like. I am guessing the portraits are also of Vietnamese people. And the fantasy images also look kind of the Hue City, but with kind of different colors. And sci-fi images also look very different than we've seen so far. I really like these images and these worlds that have been created. The shimmering and iridescent blue of the Aegean Sea takes us to the sunny shores of Greece and the refreshing and invigorating feeling of the sea breeze. So let's travel some more to what looks like Sandorini in Greece. We have some of the color, but mostly the images are of the sea. Obviously, as Aegean is also in the name of the Aegean Sea in the Mediterranean. Love the macro images. The city images look a bit more like just simply Greek cities. Architecture images really remind me of Sandorini with the white houses with blue doors. Some portraits of Greek gentlemen probably. And fantasy and sci-fi continue the sea theme, but it gives them a really nice twist. Awesome worlds, would love to visit them. Finally, we arrive at the lush and vibrant green of the tropics, representing the exotic, lively, and abundant nature of the equatorial regions. Tropic Green Moving on to a tropical poolside holiday it seems. We get some pretty jungle landscapes. I don't think zebras live in the jungle. Very green architecture in obviously tropical places. Palm trees everywhere. 
Strangely, this word combination seems to lose all people from the images. No people even in the portraits. Sci-fi has some really nice locales pictured there. And that was that. In the end though we went traveling to all kinds of places I guess. If you are wondering if I used the same seed again for all the images. Yes I did, the same 777 as always. But I didn't include it in the prompts as the model has already changed twice for the images in the beginning and once for the rest of the images. So you cannot get the exact same images anyway anymore. But I hope you at least get an idea of what these color words will look like in different contexts. There is a link in the description below to my wiki where I put all the results of my experiments. I have tried to organize it a little bit, but I'm sorry if it is kind of chaotic over there. But I hope you have found something useful from this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. And I always appreciate all the comments and likes too. There has been a crazy amount of growth on my channel so I really thank all of you for tuning into my experiments. Let's continue prompting.